Guys, guys, I found a super well hidden secret in the Chamber of Secrets game. No, I'm I'm about to show it to you, but you've got to promise to not show it to anyone else or I will go to prison. So, are you ready? <laughs> I'm sure as most of you are aware by now, Chamber of Secrets is my most fondly remembered Harry Potter game. The graphics, colours and lighting are gorgeous and evocative, the level designs are winding and full of secrets and surprises, and it really does a good job of making you feel like you've just been dropped straight into the wizarding world. But what if I was to tell you? There's more. That's right, they actually put me into the game. Just kidding, that obviously isn't true. But there is a whole bunch of extra secrets and surprises waiting to be discovered. Some that I only just found out about myself. So strap in and let's have a closer look at Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets PC game. First of all, if you haven't done so already, check out my review for this game, as well as videos for some of the other Harry Potter PC and console games. I plan on doing some more Harry Potter in the future too, so subscribe if you want to check that out, give this a like if you want, and catch me playing games live at some point, either here or on Twitch. Is anyone else having the best stream of their life? I've also done a video on helping you get the games working on modern PCs, so check that out if you really want to dive in and explore the world of Harry Potter again. And if you want to help support the channel, I've got a Patreon where you can sign up to get your name immortalized at the end of my videos if you want to be associated with the kind of hot garbage that I try to pass off as entertainment. Janae Weasley. In today's video, we're gonna have a look at a whole bunch of behind the scenes and secrets you may not have come across before, starting with demos. Did you know there are not one, but two demos for the game? I didn't even know there were demos for the game until like a few months ago. And what's more, they don't just copy and paste a level from the game, but are actually two levels of their own. And uh, wait, what, what is this? Oh no, the NVIDIA recording thing bloody put the recording overlay symbol in all of my video footage? Great. Oh, actually, I know how to fix this. <laughs> Perfect! Anyway, the demos are both presented as challenges set by Lockhart. Thank god. I mean, we can never have too much Gilderoy content, can we? They both do a pretty good job of showing us the basic gameplay and some of the creatures and collectibles. The first has us performing Flopendo and Alohomora spells, where Lockhart tells us how to cast spells instead of Stephen Fry. To cast a spell, press and hold the left mouse button. I don't know if I like Lockhart telling me what to do, no offence. Somewhat confusingly, we have a lot of the voice clips from the final game, meaning it's Ron's voice telling us how to jump. Run to the ledge and press the right mouse button. A, a bit weird seeing as you know he's not here. The demo has the same gorgeous graphics, effects, lighting, music and sound effects as the final game. Really showing off how beautiful the Hogwarts in this game is and you're able to change the settings in the demo to get higher resolution the same way as in the normal game. As explained in my tutorial video here, we come across giant orange snails with their fiery slime trails and using the pressure plate we find a lovely secret room full of books and beans. There are also Spongify carpets to bounce off of, which are honestly one of the most fun mechanics in the game, so no wonder they decided to show it off. Those pesky fire crabs also make an appearance, but are not too difficult to deal with here, thank god. We also get a nice bit of Hogwarts magic, with the stairs flipping up to get to the rest of the level. Collectible wizard cards also show up, looking just as majestic as ever, with this silver one here kind of a challenge to get. We also get some funny lines from all these statues of Lockhart that spray us with beans. I'm always happy to give students beans. Them all at once. Don't be shy about coming around to my office to thank me for the beans. Honestly, I kind of wish they put some of these into the actual game. They're that weird. I once subdued a Hungarian horntail with nothing but sulfur flavored Bertie Bots every flavor beans. Having got all the wizard cards and lifting up these stairs, we reach the completion star and thus concludes the demo. I kind of wish there was a timer or maybe something about the number of challenge stars collected on the way, but whatever. That's what the actual game's for. Please buy the game. Moving on to the second demo, we start off basically exactly the same, with the same few rooms to start off with, this time with Stephen Fry's voice though. To cast a spell, press and hold the left mouse button. However, after that, the demo is completely different, this time with the completion star located at the top of this little tower. Oh, hello there, back of Lockhart's head image. This demo seems to have a bit more threat to it, with pits full of green ooze and two fire crabs at the same time. This wizard card could be a bit challenging to collect, and getting rid of both of these snails gives us some more Hogwarts magic and raises up this corridor. 
sure, we come across everyone's favourite little creatures, gnomes. Boy, am I glad to see them again. There's even one sneakily hiding behind the corner to surprise you if you're not careful. I like that this bit is in a little greenhouse, complete with the moody sky above. This bit with moving platforms around this central column is a bit precarious, with a lovely secret flipping wall panel. In this room, we get a surprise attack from two fire crabs. I thought that this challenge here with these three foot panels raising three parts of this bridge was actually kind of good, as you have to work out what order to stand on the panels and cross the bridge in time before the sections lower themselves again. We can unlock this secret door disguised as a window to access this tower section outside, complete with a gold wizard card of Harry and that damn portrait of Lockhart painting himself. God, I love this stupid painting so much. And we then reach the completion star and complete the second demo. Please buy this game. Please, please, please. So that's the demos done, providing us with two whole extra challenges. But what if I was to tell you there's a whole extra challenge hidden within the actual game itself? That's right, baby. The devs left in a complete level and I'm going to show you it and how you can access it and play it yourself. First of all, you'll need to access the debug mode. It's a bit different in this game to the first game. For this one, you'll need to go into the game Dot .ini file, located in a folder called Harry Potter 2 that can be found in your main documents folder once the game has been played at least once. Then change debug mode equals false to equals true with a capital T. It actually appears here twice in mine, I'm not actually sure which one you're supposed to change so I just changed both. Once you've done that, head into the game and load up a level and you should find the green debug text in the top left of the screen if successful. There are now two main easy ways to access the special level, known as the Gryffindor challenge. In the Gryffindor common room, head to the top of the stairs to the closed door, press delete to access flying ghost no clip mode, and use the arrow keys and mouse to fly through the door into the corridor behind it. Press delete again to drop Harry wherever your new position is, and walk in until you get transported to the level. An alternative easier method is to press F4 to bring up the level select menu, find Gryffindor challenge, and either double click or click and press launch, and the level should load up. The Gryffindor challenge takes into account all the spells you've learned throughout the game, and kind of acts like the Golden Wizard card challenge, but slightly more difficult. By the way, if you've entered the challenge from a new save, press F9 to make Harry learn all the spells, because baby, you're gonna need them. The music here is pretty weird, right? <laughs> It kind of doesn't match the rest of the game, like, at all. I think it's kind of speculated that it would have had something to do with Fred and George, which would make it a bit more appropriate. And that kind of makes sense, because, you know, Gryffindor common room, right? <laughs> to be honest, I find this challenge to be a bit visually plain, and some of the level design to be a bit unpolished, but... That's because, uh, you know, it is. It is fully functioning though, and pretty good I must say, with some fun little bits, such as these beans appearing with acceleration, and all these beans hiding in the rafters. Toy Story 2 Andy's house, anyone? The best bit though is right near the end, where nestled in the library are a few gnome holes and a <coughs> load of fire crabs. And I'm not gonna lie, I almost died. Like, it's pretty damn hard. Moving on, it's time to have a quick look around out of bounds, methinks. Using the method I talked about to get into the Gryffindor challenge, you can fly around Hogwarts, no clipping to your heart's content. Let's have a quick look through at some of the bits I managed to stumble upon. Do let me know if you've managed to find anything fun, because I definitely haven't found everything. And obviously read me to filth if I manage to bring up something that's actually just part of the game again, okay. I'm just an idiot. First off we have Privet Drive, where we can see the logo floating away in the sky with a couple of stone textures for some reason. Hedwig's looking pretty cute too. Hagrid and Ron are just hanging around outside the house, and you can actually see Hagrid in the cutscene when Fred and George come to rescue Harry. Like, how did they accidentally leave this in? Diagon Alley is pretty nice, and you can have a look around this little shop. Orphan for sale. Flourish and Blots looks pretty nice. Ron and Filch is hanging around the level of the cutscene with the flying car. I guess Ron is here as he has lines, but uh... Filch? In the Whomping Willow level, there is a whole extra space with a second version of the level, with some but not all of the same bits, and some of it is actually interactable. Not only does the new <laughs> cast life, it also reveals magically hidden things. I'm assuming the second space is used for some of the intro cutscene? In fact, there are quite a few doubles in this game. The hall during dueling has two halls, one of which being only half filled with students. The hall during the house cup ceremony has one hall filled with people, and a second hall the winner's banners. The Quidditch pitch level also has some extra pitches, you know, you know, just in case one wasn't enough. Characters also like to just hang about the place. The grounds at night contain a lit up Hagrid's hut underground, and Lucius and Dumbledore hanging about with Hagrid and Ron for the firing scene. Places. 
places, people, places. The main Hogwarts hub and the Grand Staircase both have rooms filled with a random assortment of characters, some of which not actually used as far as I know, like um Pig and Harry's arm and leg, my favourite character. I'm assuming for the Polyjuice Potion transformation scene, the portrait of the fat lady has her own room with a full 3D model for the clips where she speaks. The toilets in Moaning Myrtle's bathroom can also be flippendo to spawn items, including gnomes, baby gnomes. <laughs> Oh, hello, endless gnomes. Okay, maybe that's that's too, that's too many gnomes. The bicorn horn challenge. Any gnomes you throw down into the goo dispenser, presumably they've just been completely dissolved away. At the end, you can actually see a fair bit of the potions classroom too, which is nice. In the Slytherin common room, we can now go behind the girls into the girls' dormitory to find... <laughs> oh, nothing. Uh, okay. You wouldn't want us to find Professor Snape, would you? In the Forbidden Forest, after Ron helps you up over the logs, he just stands there like get a life loser don't you have anything better to do can be found again later on in the aragog battle waiting at the top guess he's just as adverse to helping us here as he was in the ps2 version then huh i didn't find too much in the spell challenges actually in scourge this poor snail is waiting all by himself in this massive space no spongify also has a skybox even though as far as i know there is nowhere where the sky is visible speaking of skyboxes if you go into the skybox leave harry there and then fly off again you can see a giant Attack on Titan-esque carry waiting to destroy the world. You can also leave other things there, like gnomes, to terrifying effect. Ah! In the chamber, Ron and Lockhart are just standing about without a care in the world. Uh, Ron, try helping for once in your life challenge. In the final chamber, Ginny's not even asleep. A filthy liar doesn't need my help, clearly. A room containing a bunch of characters and items is fun, with bits of the basilisk, Harry saving Ginny, the sword, these clapperboards, two foxes, which play Play this weird twinkly music when you walk nearby. I can't seem to find the deviously handsome Tom Riddle though, let me know if you know where he's hiding. The golden card challenge has this weird donut shaped room just above the main gallery, and it turns out it's for when you get the cards and the curtain raises up. Also, you can really tell just how long this level is, like whoa. That's most of the stuff I've found. I'm sure there's definitely more stuff hiding around, so yeah, do comment below. There's one last part to this video though, as well as just flying about the place, there's more you can do in the dev console. By typing in a certain command, I'll write this in the description too, <laughs> you can actually morph Harry into other characters to often hilarious results, like <laughs> where did Filch's chin go? Uh, uh, uh. If you change level, you then spawn in as that character, and changing back to Harry can be equally horrifying, like oh my god. However, not only can you change Harry into other characters, but you can change every other character and object into Harry. Now, this is where the fun begins. Harry as a bean being juggled by a half Harry, half other student was so freaky. There's Harry as a save book over there. Harry as various parts of the tree is um odd. The bean bonus room becomes especially colourful, with added chest harries and scourge harries. Harry rattling around as a suit of armour was disconcerting to say the least. Harry as a spider was just too f***ing much, somehow scarier than the actual spiders. And just wait till you see Harry as other characters, oh my god. Potter, I do believe expulsion is in order. See if you can guess who some of these are supposed to be. Harry as a pig anyone? <laughs> Harry as Mrs. Norris was kind of cute. Harry as Forks, bizarre. Honestly, go and have a look for yourself. It, it was a lot. And that about covers all the fun extra crazy stuff I've been able to come across. Do comment anything extra you know about, whether that's extra content, cut content, or hidden secrets. God, this was fun. Do, do let me know in the comments if you find this kind of stuff interesting. Give this a like and a subscribe if you thought it was fun. I thought we had a bit of fun, didn't we have fun? There will almost certainly be more Harry Potter content in the future, so do subscribe if you want to see that kind of thing. Come and join us in the Discord channel if you're just as crazy into Harry Potter as the rest of us seem to be. I'll catch you in the next one, and I'll leave you with this. Bye!
Oh. 